Atminties biuras viena iš Kaunas 2.2 programų skirta pažinti miesto praeitį, tyrinėti jo DNR, o kartu ir geriau pažinti save. Atminties biuras gimė iš noro kalbėti apie visus šviesius ir tamsius miesto istorijos puslapius. Visi mūsų programoje pristatome mano kūriniai ir projektai yra įkvipti vietos istorijų. Jų dėka greuname ilgą metį Kauno kaip lietuviškiausio miesto stereotipą ir atveriame turtingus daugiatautės praeities klodus. Primename savo pirmtą kūlikimus. Sugražiname veidus tų, iš kurių paveldėjome šį miestą ir kurių vardus taip negailestingai ištrinė istoriją. Atsigrėždami į praeitį mokome atvirumo, dialogų ir empatijos, o žvelgdami dabar tik klausime, kokio miesto norime šiandien, kokią ateitį šiame mieste tikime sukurti. Esu Justina, Kaunas 2022 programos atminties biuros koordinatorių. Noriu jums papasakoti apie mūsų projektui labai svarbią, unikalią vietą – Kauno senasės kapinės, kuriuose šiuo metu esame. Čia, kaip niekur kitur, išlikę labai daug daugiatučio miesto ženklų. Vienoje pusėje stovi Aleksandro Puškino gimnazija, buvusi Vokiečių gimnazija. Kitoje pusėje buvusi Lenkų gimnazija, dabar Stepano Dariaus ir Stasio Gyrėno gimnazija. Kiek toleliau? buvusi rusų gimnazija. Kapinėse iki šiol veikia cerkvė ir tarpukariu pastatyta mečetė. Šioje nedidelėje teritorijoje iki antro pasaulinio karo sugyveno net keturios konfesijos – evangelikai liuteronai, musulmonai, stačiatikiai ir katalikai. Sovietmečių šios kapinės buvo tapusios pasipriešinimo vieta. Per vėlinės miestiečiai čia rinkdavosi pagerbti savo artimųjų atminimo, kartu prisiminti Lietuvos laisvę. 1959-aisiai sovietinė valdžia įsakė kapinę sunaikinti. Žmonės privalėjo perkelti savo artimųjų palaikus į kitas kapinės. Nugriauti paminklai, tarp jų ir žymusis Juozo Zikaro bei Vladimiro Dubeneckio žuvus jiems už tėvynę. Teritorija negailestingai perplanuota, ir pavadinta Ramybės parkų. Vis dėl to čia liko lysėtis daugybės žymių kauniečių. Rašytojas Hindris Parlandas, operos soliste Veronika Podienaitė, generolas Silvestras Žukauskas, vokiečių kariai kritę pirmajame pasauliniame kare, Lietuvos kariai savo noriai ir daugybė kitų. Po 1990-ųjų Lietuvos nepriklausomybės atgavimo šiai vietai sugražintas Kauno senųjų kapinių pavadinimas. Suteiktas pavaldo objekto statusas atstatyti paminklui. Tačiau daugelis kauniečių iki šiol šią vietą vadina Ramybės parko. Visas šis daugias luoksnis vietos kontekstas pasirodė labai įdomus istorijų festivaliui. Norėjome apie tai papasakoti platesniam žmonių ratui. O kartu ir atverti šios vietos bendruomenės kauniečiams. Todėl 2019 metais Ramybės parke praleidome labai daug laiko. Kalbinome bendruomenės narius, aplinkinius vietos gyventojus ir praeivius. Vėliau visą tą medžiagą perdavėme menininkams. Taip gimė net keletas įspūdingų storių festivalio meno kūrinių. Muzikinė kantata Ramybės Ramybės. Libretą iš kauniečių istorijų parašė Daiva Čepauskaitė. Muzika sukūrė šviesos atminties kompozitorius Vidmantas Bartulis. Atliko danguolės bei narytės vadovaujami Kauno chorui. Nepaprastai džiaugiamės, kad prie atlikėjų prisijungė visų keturių kadaise čia gyvavusių konfesijų šventikai. Šis unikalus kūrinys sujungė istoriją, atmintį, skirtingas konfesijas, kartas, menininkus ir bendruomenės. Kapinės. Kap. Kap. Kapsino medžių. Juodas varnų rašalas. Juodi mirties metraščiai. Šimta medžiais lapa iš lama. Visi po tomis pačiomis varnomis. Laikė keturis kapinių kampus, kaip didelį mirusių stalą. Ramybę vaišinosi juvėlės, 
ramybę ir amžina dangau šviesą. Mūsų surinktos istorijos įkvėpė ir keletą gatvės meno kūrinių, kuriuos šioje teritorijoje sukūrė ir apgyvendino menininkas Tadas Šimkus. Atsisveikinimas. Piešinys skirtas priminti skaudų miesto istorijos puslapį – Kauno senųjų kapinių perkelimą. Tuomet kauniečiams teko dar kartą atsisveikinti su savo mirusiais artimaisiais. Kūrinys įkvėptas mistiškos istorijos, kurią mums papasakojo Greta Kapinių gyvenantį Viliją. Anot jos čia buvo palaidota jauna mergaitė. Viliją pasakojo, kai atidarė karstą, mama savo dukrą rado kaip užmiguse. Labai graži buvo. Tuo metu čia daug žmonių dirbo, daug kas tai matė. Kai tik mama mergaitė palėtė, jos kūnas į dulkes pavirtų, o ilgi nuo stabus plaukai liko palaidi karste gulėti. Vėliau mama šukavo tos plaukus ir verkė su li kiekvienu braukimu. Kauno senosiose kapinėse ilsisi vienas žymiausių Suomijos Švedijos modernistų, rašytojas Henris Parlandas. Jis nuo maždaug 1928 metų gyveno Kaune. Piešinys skirtas priminti šią istorinę asmenybę. Vyborgė gimusi Henry Parlandą į Kauną atsiuntė jo tėvai, susirūpinė jauno poeto gyvenimo būdu. Greitai išgarsėjęs tėvynėje jis pasinėrė į bohemišką gyvenimą. Kaune rašytoja globojo dėdė, filosofijos profesorius Vosilius Sezamanas. O atvykęs į šį miestą, Henris Parlandas tėvams rašė. Kaunas visai nėra skilė, kaip jūs galvojote, o gražia gamta ir begalinė erdvė pasižymintis miestas su elektra, autobusais, žydais ir gausybė prastos kavos. Kaune rašytojas dirbo Švedijos karalystės konsulato sekretoriniu. Kaune įsėmė kurti savo pirmąjį romaną su dužo, tačiau jo baigti nespėjo. Mirenos karuotinos būdamas vos 22. Kauno senosiuose kapinėse 1956 lapkričio antraje net keletas tūkstančių žmonių dalyvavo spontaniškoje solidarumo su Vengrijos revoliucija demonstracijoje. Jie dainavo patriotinės dainas, jėdoja religinės gėsmes, o minioje girdėjosi šūksniai – laisvė Lietuvai, šalim rankas nuo Vengrijos. Susirinkusiai iš šalikų ir skarų nupynė net keletą Lietuvos vėliavų. Panašus įvykiai kartojos ir 1957 ir 1958-aisiais, tai sovietinę valdžią paskatino kapinės likviduoti. Šis gatvės meno kūrinys simbolizuoja nepailstantį rezistentą mumise. Kartu ir kova ne tik už save, bet ir už bendražmogiškas vertybės bei laisvės. Du 2022 metais atminties biuras pristatys skirtingas miesto istorijos temas. Jeigu žiais mėnesį skirsime 72 metų atminčiai, kalantos įvykių ir šio istorinio laiko refleksijai, tam bus skirta paroda, spektakliai, koncertai ir konferencijos, nu Liepos vidur atsigrešime į žydiškąją miesto atmintį. Kalbėsime ne tik apie holokaustų istoriją, bet ir apie mieste gyvavusią turtingą kultūrą, prisiminsime užmirštus kauniečių vardus ir čia gyvenusių įlikimus. Šią programą vainikuos pasaulio litvakų suvažiavimas, litvakų forumas. Rudens pabaigoje kviesime į šiolaikinio Kauno istorijų apmąstymus. Tą darysime kartu su istorijų programa ir šiandien mieste gyvenančiais įvairių tautų kauniečiais. Nuo programą pabaigsime su ateities svarstymais. Metus užbaigiančią konferenciją Europos idėją klausime, kas yra Europa, ką reiškia būti europiečių ir koks Europos likimas. Atminties biuro programą kūrėme kartu su partneriais Lietuvai ir užsienyje. Ypač aktyviai įsijungė Litvakai menininkai, sugrįžė į Lietuvą iš Pietų Afrikos Respublikos, Didžiosios Britanijos, Prancūzijos ir Izraelio. Tai Viljamas Kentridžas, Filipas Milleris, Jenny Kagan, Brusas Clarkas ir daugelis kitų.
So, for those who don't know me, <laughs> um, who were at a different tour with Justina, I'm Daiva Tsitvarinya, uh, Kaunas 2022 uh, program memory office curator, and the program is dedicated to the memory past of the city, but they think it's mainly about the people of the city. I'm proud to say that it's not a program about building, sorry, modernism program curators. <laughs> I think it's much more interesting, much more valuable program because it's about the people of the city, the people who used to live in those buildings, about the stories that happened in those buildings. So this is the most important program of Komnos 2022. Um, so, so we, mm, I'm kind of confused here because there are people who were with me and not with me. So for those who were not with me, I just want to say that Kunas 2022 started with rethinking uh, the city, rethinking the identity of the city, past of the city. And we were also, as this boy, one looking at the city, wondering about the past of the city and also about the future of the city. So we started with the issues. And we thought that Kona's had a lot of issues, at least at the time, with the identity of the city. We didn't know who we were. We didn't, we didn't know where we heading to. And uh, we thought that it's very good time to revisit uh, our past, our relationship with the past, how we think about the past, how we talk about the past. And of course, we wanted to remind people, Kaunasians, who were proudly saying that Kaunas was the most Lithuanian city, that Kaunas was never Lithuanian, very Lithuanian city, that there were a lot of people of different nationalities living here. For example, at the beginning of the 20th century, five equal parts of five different uh, ethnic groups used to live here. Germans, Poles, Russians, Jewish, Jews, and Lithuanians. And uh, before the Second World War, almost one third part of the population was Jewish. And we had rich and lively world in the city, which was sadly erased. And with this program, we want to remind those stories, we want to remind the world, we want to bring back the traces of that world which used once to exist. So, uh, next slide, please. I can talk the whole day. So, uh, so, uh, so we had, we, uh, when we started in 2017, we immediately started to work and we collected the stories, we collected the testimonies of people, especially we started with the Holocaust survivors and we interviewed them and we put those stories on, about, on, our, on the websites which we created to, before the CONUS 2022, which is called Sites of Memory. And we wanted to, to have those stories for the future of the city, for, for the people of the city, but also we want to have this kind of pool of stories uh, which could become a source for an inspiration for artists who, cre uh, who would create projects for CONUS 2022. And we already had uh, quite a few programs which were based on those stories. And, uh, and with the programs, with the projects like you, you've seen today, the, like street art projects, we want to bring back those stories, to bring back the material traces of the world which used to exist here. And we are very proud that, uh, proud to say that, uh, that uh, we will, for the whole year, as Virginia mentioned uh, yesterday, we will have an exhibition by famous Litvak, and Litvak is a, uh, Litvak is a uh, G who has origins in this, uh, from this, not only Lithuania, but uh, um, uh, the region or former Grand Duchy of Lithuania, uh, William Kentridge, uh, from South Africa, and we, in our program, we have a lot of projects which are created together or in collaboration or initiated by, uh, by Litwerks or by uh, Jewish artists who had, have origins in Lithuania or Konas, as William Kentridge in this case. And uh, if, if uh, I can present you shortly the program 
memory office program in 2022 there would be uh, sorry there would be a few uh, different a few big programs one of them is uh, one of them uh, will happen in May and it's uh, it tells the story of the Soviet occupation I they think this program is uh, especially important for international audience which uh, in my experience no sorry guys know little about this uh, uh, region of Europe and um, 1972 is very important in the day and age in the past of the in the in the past of this city, and it tells also a lot about DNA of this city. And I think that resistance, uh, this element gene of resistance, is part of DNA of the city in DNA of uh, the residents of the city. So in 1972, uh, uh, a young guy, uh, Roma Scalante, immolated himself uh, at the center of the city near Lysa Salea, saying that he's doing that for freedom of Lithuania. And this event, uh, this event uh, inspired uh, huge uh, marches for freedom in Lysa Salea, which lasted for a few days. And also, uh, watch, it, it, this event also caused uh, a big su uh, supervision of, uh, of Soviet regime uh, in the city. And the whole generation was uh, strongly affected by this event. And uh, young people were attacked on the streets, interrogated. Uh, people who participated in those marches could not study at the universities. And, uh, and we have a, a big program that, is, uh, that tells the story of 1972, the context of, of this event and uh, the context of Soviet occupation and the city at that time. And another, th uh, another part of the program that I wanted to stress is the collaborational project with our partner city, Esh to uh, We have uh, projects uh, which are uh, organized by uh, our partner organizations, Chilonis Museum, Konas 9th, 4th, I know that we want coffee, so Ina, <laughs> let's move on. And uh, there is also one interesting exhibition which uh, tells the story of, which, is, which I think is kind of universal. That's why I want, wanted to mention it. Um, don't have it here. Uh, I think it's a universal story which tells uh, the, uh, which talks about the competition, uh, which can all, all, all sometimes become become a fight between two cities, the capital city and the second city. I think um, though, uh, many of you recognize that, that competition. So our partner organizations, uh, MOM Museum in Vilnius and Kona City Museum in Kona are organizing this interesting exhibition which tells uh, the story, the origins of that competition, the history of that competition. Uh, in different ways, in uh, anthropological way, so sociological way, and uh, it uh, talks uh, also about, uh, will tell, hopefully, those funny stories, those stereotype stories that are related to that competition. And uh, City Telling Festival, which we initiated in 2019 as a new initiative, which tells the stories, forgotten stories of the city, uh, will start next year in the middle of July, and uh, we will have a lot, a lot of projects dedicated to different stories of the city of the past. And, but, the, mm, but, but most of the projects will be dedicated to the Jewish memory of the city. And uh, one of the biggest events will be Litvak Forum, uh, which will happen, uh, will take place at the end of September. And uh, it will be surrounded by huge uh, art, uh, art projects as uh, Konas Cantata, which Virginia mentioned to you yesterday, uh, Out of Darkness exhibition, which is created by uh, Litwerk artist Jenny Kagan from UK, which is based on her personal story because her parents 
uh, who were Caucasians and they were in ghetto and they survived and they were telling the, uh, her whole childhood the story of their survival and how they were hiding in the factory in Viliampole and the artist created this exhibition telling how she heard those, those stories. And in September, we'll have a different part of the program which will tell the stories of today. Uh, I think that today Konas is becoming again multicultural, multi-ethnic city, and I think it's really a good thing. And uh, this program, Where Can I Find You, storytelling program, will tell the stories of people who are living here today, people of different ethnicities and different cultures. And at the end, we will talk about the future, because we have to talk about the past to learn from it, but also the main idea is we have to learn from the past that we would know um, what, kind of future do we, what kind of future do we want in the city. So we will have a big conference, and I come back, big conference, uh, which, is, which will talk about the future of the city and also the future of Europe. What is the future of Europe? What does it mean to be European today? What it will mean to be European tomorrow? And uh, those last slides uh, uh, show you our City Telling Festival, which will take place this year. It's this year, and it's called At Home because the concept, concept was created at home this year, where we were, where we all were. <laughs> and uh, and uh, at, the beginning, uh, at the beginning of that uh, festival, the f uh, we will start the festival uh, with, the angel with those angels which were brought from Dresden and were created by uh, an artist who lives in Denmark. And uh, because I think that after all, this program is about the values that we miss these days the most. Today we live in a very divisive, very polarized world. And I think what we lack is the values of openness to the other, of dialogue and empathy. And this program is about all of them. So that's why we will start the City Telling Festival this year with those rolling angels who will go to the main, main street of the city and will remind us what we missed today. Thank you. And now you can have, uh, we can have short uh, session of uh, questions and answers and then coffee and cake. By the way, this is a book, I forgot to show you, this is a book which is called Kona's Juice. Hopefully in a month we will have it in English. Uh, and it's our Uh, and this is our, yeah, we, need, we think that's what we need to give back to those who lived here in the city before us. We built this city, so we wanted to remind those stories of the life that existed here. So that's why we published this book. Um, Hi, hello, my name is Kai, Kai Strittmatter from Germany. Uh, when you started your work with the memory office, uh, and you said there was this general feeling for many years and decades that everybody is so proud to be living in the most Lithuanian city, was there any reaction, it was or is there any reaction to your work? Do you have uh, a debate, do you have pushback from people who don't want the memory back? No. N n no, I think, uh, I think that art is a very good tool to talk about memory and past. Uh, I think it's a very soft tool. And what I like about it the most is that it involves emotions and feelings and hopefully empathy. We were not stating the facts, numbers, and we w don't fight about it, but we tell the stories which are personal, to, with which you can relate hopefully. 
And uh, the reactions mostly are very positive. And uh, for example, at the opening of the first city selling festival, we included the communities uh, that um, are related to Ramin Besparka. Some of you visited it. Uh, Muslim community, a Russian Orthodox community, and uh, they opened up. They were having, they had, uh, they were offering tours, and and people were so excited. They were calling us. They were saying, "Oh, I, I pass the uh, the the mosque every day, and I I am so curious to see what's inside. Should I should I bring slippers and uh, and so on? So uh, and the reactions." Uh, were really very positive after every pro project. So I think that art can help in a very soft way to change the mentality and to change the attitude we have towards our history, hopefully. Uh, thank you. Uh, Klaus Hohenbrand from the Taz symbol in uh, daily newspaper. Uh, will the former Jewish ghetto from the Nazi period uh, have any role during the program Kaunas 2022? Yes, uh, it's here in the book also. As uh, This book is not about the Holocaust, it's about uh, the history of Kaunas Jews, of Kaunas Jews, but also uh, Kaunas ghetto history is also here. But, we, for example, at the, in 2019, we had a project which was inspired by the project I've, I've seen in uh, Israel. Uh, in Kona's Ghetto, there was established Kona's Ghetto Police Orchestra, where famous, prominent, uh, interwar period uh, musicians um, uh, used to play that in orchestra. And not a lot of Konasians knew about the fact. So we... Uh, inspired by the project uh, that, was uh, that was started in, in Israel, which reenacted the first Kona's Ghetto Police Orchestra uh, performance. So we, uh, we contacted the organizer of that, uh, of that project. We received uh, the original piece notes, which were of notes of the piece which was created by a composer in Kona's Ghetto. Uh, and we created a new performance based on the repertoire we knew they played uh, in Ghetto. And we, for the first time in independent Lithuania, we performed that piece which was created in Kona's Ghetto, which was called Symphony in Yellow, written by Percy Hyde. And the amazing story was that when we announced about this performance, which actually was played here, performed here in this building by Kona Symphony Orchestra and Kona's uh, students, uh, I received an email saying, hello, I'm Joseph Hyde, son of Percy Hyde, the composer, and I'm coming to Kona's to see the performance. And that was amazing. Uh, because for that person, it was also a story of healing. He never wanted to come back to this bloodland. And when, we, when he saw the performance, when we met us, when we learned about this program, when he learned, as actually many people who had origins in the city, that there are people here today who care about the past. Uh, his whole attitude towards this city and this country changed and he didn't want to leave. And he said, now I definitely have to come back. When was that? 2019. And we have the recording of that concert. If you want the link, we will give it to you. There you go. Yeah. Um I'm, I'm Paul Ingendai from the Frankfurt Allgemeine Zeitung in Germany. I, first, I want to thank you for, for this overview of memory culture. I, th I think we all share the views and the, the values you were talking about, but I have a feeling there's a misconception about art because art isn't soft, I think. Sorry, I agree I, with you. And yes, I, yes. But I just wanted to say 
that art also can be bleak and dark and cruel True. and negative and provocative. And so is there and any guilty. space yes. where we don't hold hands? Yes. That kind of thing? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you know, I, we share in all the things, but if art is art, it needs to be something different also. And all the voices I think you were alluding to, like the divisionist and the reactionary and the right wing and the nationalist, all the things we find bad, there needs to be a space for that, for debate, True. for... for True. Yes. Is there space is next there year? Is there a debate? Yeah, I mean, will there be spaces for that kind of... Because many people don't find themselves probably represented in, in this holding hand thing. You know what I mean? I know, but I don't think that it's about holding hands. It's uh, just, uh, I personally believe that uh, that when you tell the, yes, I, I chose the wrong words, I think, but I think that when you tell the personal story, which is not soft, which is not beautiful, as for example, Jenny Kagan, uh, Out of Darkness exhibition, it's, it's, it's a Holocaust survival story. It's not soft, it's not beautiful. It's, uh, and the context is brutal. But I think that, uh, I mean that when you tell this personal story, I'm not sure that I can explain it the way I want. I think that when you, art can tell personal story to which you can relate better than with numbers and facts. Oh, yeah, That's yeah. what I mean. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I also meant that there are so many people not sharing in the, not sharing in the empathy thing which of course worries me, as it worries most of us, and how, how does one reach these people? But I, I don't want to, you know, make a debate, but I just wanted to say that... We can I, talk over coffee. I wish we could, could reach more people. I wish it too. <laughs> yeah. um, hello, uh, my name is Cornelius from the German Public Radio. Um, I have a question actually in relation to what Paul just asked before. Um, you were talking about the changing of uh, the attitude towards history. And if you are changing uh, uh, the attitude towards history, my very simple question is, what is the present attitude to your history? You know, because you, you, you were... Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that, first of all, what we do is talk about the Second World War. I think for us it's the most important aim to talk about Second World War. If, you, I, tell, if I put it in very simple... I'm very sorry, but it's just... It's a simple way to put things, but that uh, is that uh, I think that uh, things change already and have changed already. But when we started in 2017, we felt that uh, Lithuanians, uh, the attitude toward the history was simply put, well, it was, let's talk about Kaunas. It was, when we talk about the history of Kaunas, it would be, First of all, this interwar period, which is related to the golden age when Gunas was capital, and we in Lysmasalea we have restaurants, Bohemia, great. And then we skip the war, as it's not part of our history, and then we go to this uh, Lithuanian trauma, Soviet occupation. And, uh, and also because of the fact that Western Europe never cared, and I think still doesn't care about what happened here, People here are concentrated on their trauma and they are kind of angry that another part of Europe doesn't care about this trauma. And there is this uh, competition with the bigger victim here. So we have tensions uh, in, in relation to history, but we want to talk about Second World War and we tell those stories. And I'm very happy that our partners also are starting to tell those stories and I think that's the main change that we already achieved. That our partners in the city are telling the stories that they probably didn't tell before. Thank you. My name is Max. I also work for the National Public Radio. And I think uh, the question is quite similar to the one you just answered. Um, you used the phrase uh, in the beginning, and yesterday um, Victoria also used that phrase, uh, we didn't know who we were or who we are, and we didn't know about our history. Could you explain a little bit more what you understand by this? Yes, it's also related to the history here, to the, 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 of, of this region. Um, uh, we had Soviet occupation, 
and during the Soviet occupation to talk about the history which happened before the so Soviet occupation, it was taboo. Soviets didn't talk about our, our Lithuanian history. And also people, families who were, let's say, re deported to Siberia, and they, uh, they didn't tell their personal stories, not all of them, but most of them. They, they didn't tell because they were afraid. They didn't tell their, what happened to their families, to their children, to their grandchildren. So we didn't have the chance to learn about the history. So what happened in 1990? So at, we started to learn step by step about our history, about our, ourselves. I think that uh, I kind of understand why we started with those Lithuanian stories, because we have to learn what happened to us. And I think now it's time, with, I think that uh, all the residents of Kaunas are Kaunasians, and e we equally have to learn about all of them. But uh, for the last at least few years, I think we learn more and more about all the colors of the past, and also about all the different uh, stories and also different communities that used to live here that we didn't know anything about. Although you all the time had a university here where probably there was a department for history also during the years of Soviet You mean occupation. Soviet occupation? Yes. During the Soviet occupation, there was, history was a science of propaganda. So there was no history there. What is Klaus again from Berlin? Um, to come back to the topic of history in Lithuania, um, we have the time of the German occupation starting uh, 1941. And uh, it's a sad fact that lots of Lithuanians as well collaborated during this occupation with the Nazi regime, with the occupation forces. and. Uh, Today we were wandering around the city together with you and we saw these signs of commemoration to persons who had helped the Jews in surviving the ghetto times. But uh, is there any discussion or any um, remembrance that many, many Lithuanians as well during that time were helping uh, the Nazi regime in murdering the Jews? I think that in the public discourse, there are those, uh, there are those debates, discussions for the society to accept the fact. I think it's difficult. First of all, this history, I have to say, it's new. As we told a few minutes ago, the, the, the history as such, Lithuanian history, is still new. We are learning things every day. And... Uh, and yes, there are debates and there are tensions because it's difficult to accept this, this, this unpleasant fact. And I think that all those stories, for example, those testimonies that we collect, started to collect in 2017, in, one, on, in, in every each of them, we have those stories. Lithuanians coming to the house and, uh, and helping Germans. Yes, there are those stories everywhere, in every project, in every, in every testimony. So we, uh, thank you very much. And I think if you have questions, I'm still here. And we finally can have coffee and that famous tartar cake, 100 leaves. And we can, uh, uh, and we can go for coffee this way. Thank you very much for your patience.